All right, so in this part of the series, I'm gonna show you how to write documentation using MB Dev to generate a website that you can use to show off uh, your library. Let's get into it. All right, so this is a website um, for the documentation that MB Dev generates for you. Um, this is a uh, library called FastAI, which is also made by the people who made MB Dev. And so you can see it's very similar and structured to um, an actual Jupyter notebook um, because you have these um, rich text bits as well as the actual code um, interspersed between here. And you'll actually find that that's literally what this is. It's a uh, converted Jupyter notebook. Um, and so the great thing about this is that you can um, add images, uh, links, and everything. Um, but you can also win, say that you're, um, when someone wants to learn about a piece of your library, um, they can see uh, how to use it because you can either write your tests as the documentation for how it's used, or you can have just examples here. And um, MBDev handles all the things like uh, adding links and stuff back to your website, um, back to your source code. Uh, for people to click on and it handles that automatically so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and so uh, let's go ahead and get into uh, generating this website with MBDEV. All right, so um, first things first, I'm going to do something that I forgot to do last time, which is rename uh, this library to have an underscore. So previously I had it accidentally having um, a dash, which MBDEV does not like. Um, and so I'm going to be changing uh, this library to have an underscore. All right. All right, so to enable the documentation website for your project, go ahead and scroll down on the settings tab in your repo to GitHub pages section and ch change the source to be um, the master branch and change this directory here to be the docs. Go ahead and click save. And that's literally all you have to do in order to get a website um, up and running for the documentation with MBDEV. Um, because behind the scenes, all of the documentation was being auto-generated when we were um, writing the library. So if I go ahead and go to this link, you'll see that the project is now live. Now, um, it might take a little bit of time for you to um, see your project come up because uh, GitHub has to um, do some stuff behind the scenes to spin it up and make sure that uh, it has the correct URL pointing to it and all that. So if it's not here, you're getting like a 404. Um, just wait a little bit, you know, keep refreshing the page and it'll come up eventually. Um, and so uh, you might notice that your you know, repo, uh, your GitHub, um, your URL is a little bit different from mine. That's just because I use a custom domain. Yours should be something like your username dot uh, GitHub io slash and then the library name um okay so now that we have the documentation up let's go ahead and find out all of the cool features and stuff that you can use mbdev um, documentation for so i'm going to go ahead and open up the code um, space for our project and i will see you in just a second all right so for us to be able to instantly see any of the changes that we have without having to push all the way to github and then checking our website, um, I'm going to show you how you can um, build and serve the documentation website locally. So from your command line, go ahead and change directory into the docs. Um, run the uh, command bundle install. This will install the dependencies that MVDev uses for generating the static website using Jekyll and uh, Ruby. By the way, all these commands and stuff that I'm running for generating this documentation and stuff can also be found on the MBDev um, uh, documentation website. Um, so if um, you want to also um, copy and paste the commands or something like that, um, I uh, recommend you go to their website, which will be in the description. All right, so once that's built, go ahead and change directory back into the root directory and run make docs underscore serve. And what this will do is it will generate a, um, uh, it will start up the server. And so we should now be able to view our documentation. 
the end browser. So you'll probably get this not found error. So all you have to do is um, go to the actual path. So in this case, it's going to be slash and then the name of the repo. So in 57 underscore images, make sure you add this in slash else it's not going to work. And now you can see our page here. As you can see, uh, this is probably not going to be the same name as yours. It's probably still going to have that project. Um, like fill in the project name here. Um, that's because I edited the, this to have the name of the repository. And let me show you how you can do that and see the changes happen here. So um, in order to see the uh, landing page of your documentation website, you're going to be editing um, the, index dot, um, the index notebook. So in here, you can uh, change these markdown cells to um, be uh, whatever content you want. So here, let me update this summary to the summary for what the project is all about. So I'll go ahead and take summary. A uh, cute little Python module for um, full of magic and wonder. So nice. All right. Also, if you're using um, the code spaces, um, your documentation should be automatically regenerated every time you save the notebook. So um, uh, since I just saved this, if we go on over to here and um, reload the page, you can see now that uh, we have this cute little Python module full of magic wonder. If you um, want to build it yourself uh, manually, uh, what you can do is hop on over to a terminal. Since our terminal is currently being taken up by this uh, Jekyll in VS Code, you can just hit this plus button to get a new one. And then all you would do is type mbdev build docs and this will um, regenerate, um, this will build the documentation and stuff for you. Um, if you're getting this error, um, you may have to um, redo your, um, and it's not uh, updating your website. There might be some um, mismatch or something with the code spaces, and so you might have to delete your code space and redo it. And it doesn't seem to be um, bothering um, uh, mine right now, so I'm not going to worry about this error since um, the documentation is still getting updated. So um, say that I want to add another little information section. So let's say that I wanted to add another section called uh, tutorials. And I would change this to um, change this from markdown to or sorry from Python to markdown and say here are uh, lists here are the links to the different tutorials tutorials and I can say one two three four and if I go ahead and save this, go on over to here, reload the page, and you'll see that it has generated a new section with everything um, already put down for us. So let's now get into how we can um, show the documentation for our um, actual code that we've written. So as you can see here, there's uh, this drop-down navigation where it has a module name here. If we click that, we'll go to uh, a different page. If you notice that uh, HTML actually is called game, which is the game module that we've writ written, we wrote. And as you can see, it has all of the functions and stuff and all the code here that we've written um, already generated and stuff. But then where is the other one? Um, so um, the reason for you not seeing both is because we are not using, we didn't, edit this um, module name here. These should be unique, else you're going to have issues where they get overwritten. So here, both of our uh, core as well as our game have the same um, module name here. So we have to go ahead and edit these. So um, the mbdev convention is just to call this just the same as the module name. So here is going to be core. We could put uh, the description. 
here, which is just uh, all for character functionality. And if I go ahead and save that, it should automatically generate the documentation for me. If I reload this drop down menu, and now you can see I now have that core. Um, and it has the class um, for my ability, character, mage, as well as actual code and its output exactly as it appears here. Which is really nice because you can also do things like adding uh, images and stuff. And so um, the examples and stuff that you put here can serve as your documentation. This is the same that happens also with your uh, test cases. So if you wanted to um, make a um, test case, well, you would just put um, uh, it um, below whatever um, class or function that you're writing. And uh, then it can serve as both the test case to check your um, implementation as well as the uh, documentation for how to um, use your um, uh, whatever function or class that you're using. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same for the game. So I'm going to go ahead and add game here. So API details for the, for the game module. Go ahead and save that. Go ahead and reload the page. Drop down menu, and we have game. All right, awesome. So to add a little bit extra to your documentation, let me show you how you can incorporate doc strings into uh, your documentation website. So if you want to add um, also um, a written description with a doc string, I'll show you how um, you can do that and have it appear on MB Dev. Uh, the documentation website for uh, your project. So if I go ahead and just um, put a string at the top of function or a class, uh, we can show that it appears on documentation as well. So initializes a player uh, with there's um, speciality and a So I can't just save this and have it generated. If I go ahead and and show you see no changes have been made so if you want to do like an edit to um, a piece of code like this what you need to do is you need to actually scroll all the way down and uh, rebuild the um, uh, library by exporting everything so if i export that and reload now you'll see that the doc string appears um, as it should for um, mbdef All right, so if I wanted to um, reference something, um, say that um, for this combat, uh, I know that I need a player as well as a boss, I can reference that this player is going to be a um, particular, uh, it's going to be a, a character type, uh, or it's going to be a mage type, rather. And so if I want to make a link or something to that um, that um, and to that uh, documentation so that a user could just easily click on um, uh, on it to go to the documentation about what a mage is, um, then what you can do is add with the backticks um, the name that you um, of the class that you want uh, to generate a link for. So here I want to be able to have a link to the mage um, class that's in the uh, core uh, library. And so in order to create that link, all I have to do is uh, surround the name of the class in back ticks. So if I go ahead and scroll down here, generate the library, reload. Come on, there we go. And you'll see now this has a hyperlink to the core at the particular location where the, um, uh, the class mage is defined. If I go ahead, click this. This will also take me to uh, the actual line number and everything. So um, to make it super easy, um, you, you can uh, reference stuff. You can also do this for um, methods as well. And so for, say, the combat, I, all I, can, I can do the very similar thing. So if I want, I can say, um, 
um, perform combat between a player mage, which was generated with the init player function, um, and a um, daemon. And if I go ahead and save that, regenerate the library, you'll see that all of the hyperlinks and stuff have been created. We have the mages, the net player, we have the daemon link. Here is for daemon, here's for the net player, and here is for, leave it. Oh, sorry, this was for the mages and this was for the daemon. All right, so let me go ahead and show you that the same works for a class. If I was to add a doctrine, uh, this is main class for the header. And I go ahead and save that. Go ahead and export that change to the library and reload the page. You'll see that we now have the doctrine. So you can see the doctoring on the um, classes now, but what if you want to show the doctoring in an actual function um, that's inside of a class? Say for this example, uh, the uh, attack um, function, uh, you wanted to give an example specifically about this function. So you wanted to show the documentation and give a little example. Um, so if we were to do the same thing where we just add the do um, doctoring, build the library, go on over to our documentation, reload, and notice that there's still no documentation for the function. And that's because um, the mvdev library only does the topmost doctoring. So since this function is in a class, it's not going to uh, generate the uh, documentation doctrine for the method. If you want to do this, um, what mbdev offers you is some functionality in this um, library, um, in this module uh, show doc from the mbdev library. So let me show you what that is. So I'm going to go ahead and run all these um, lines. You have to run them in order to get access to a function. So it's underscore or show underscore doc. And then it's going to be the file, or sorry, the class, and then dot whatever function. If I go ahead and run this, you'll see that it generates this little thing that has the uh, doctoring. And what this is doing is it's essentially uh, generating an output that's going to be displayed in the documentation. If I go ahead and port this and reload. You'll see now we have uh, an additional documentation talking uh, about the um, uh, about the uh, attack function, and so uh, this works. Um, so um, this is probably best demonstrated uh, down here. So let me go ahead and reorganize the documentation uh, to make it more clear um, how the attack function works. I'm going to go ahead and delete that cell. Mosey down over to here, uh, create a new um, place, go ahead and run the show docs attack, and now um, export. And if I go ahead and reload, we have a nice better flow from you know how the attack um, function works and showing an example where it's attacking a demon and uh, how that it affects the health of the uh, target that we're attacking. I wanted to add a little bit more uh, information, so I could just uh, create a new cell, switch it over to Markdown, and I could say, uh, I will now demonstrate um, how to attack a demon. Go ahead and save that. If you're only doing Markdown, um, and not uh, changing the actual code, you actually don't need to um, 
export the library all over again. Um, so I, since I just was editing this markdown, I didn't have to redo this uh, re-export in order to see uh, this change. Some initial niceties that you get from using MBDEV is that since we're using Markdown, you can use the Markdown convention. So if I wanted to bold some text, I could use um, the double stars um, surrounding a word so like this. I could use a single star for italicize. Um, I can also add little um, uh, bubbles uh, for something like a note as well appear in blue. Um, so this is a note, uh, warnings, this is a warning, and um, if I go ahead and save these, you'll see, um, you load the page, you'll see that um, we have the text bolded, we have it italicized, and then we also have this uh, nice um, little bubble uh, where we can put information goes for our notes or if we want to draw in information um, draw the user's attention to something um, uh, such as a note for when they're using a particular function we can add this um, or for a warning or something like that there's something they need to be um, pay attention to there's something in particular you don't want being shown in the documentation website so say that I don't want to show the um, this text um, here, uh, like I have right here, say that I don't want to show this. All you have to do is add the hide flag as a comment. So if I go ahead, work this, I'm going to save it and I reload the page. You'll see now we don't have that text. You can also do things like um, collapsing. So um, if I want to, instead of I do uh, collapse, this will be a thing where people can choose whether or not they want to uh, collapse it or uh, to show the code or not. And there's a bunch of other uh, little flags that you can use, which um, you can find on the MBDEV uh, website. Another common thing to have in your documentation website is tutorials. So um, take, for example, the FastAI documentation site. There's this drop down for the different tutorials that are, um, have been created for the library. And so let me show you how you can add these tutorials also to your library. If I want to go ahead and generate a tutorials, um, page. All I would have to do is copy a notebook. Um, so here I'm going to copy the games one. And I'm going to go ahead and rename it. To tutorials.overview. And for this one not to um, be built by MBDEV and exported to its own um, its own module, I need to delete this particular um, uh, this particular tag because this is what MBDEV looks for in uh, your Jupyter notebooks for whether or not it's going to be included in your actual library. I'm going to go ahead and just delete this and call this uh, tutorial overview. And for now, I'm just going to delete all this. And just save it. All right, let's go ahead and save that and go to our website. So um, if that back up. Here. And as you can see, now there's another drop down called tutorials that has our information. So that's how you would generate a tutorial for 
um, a, a tutorial page that doesn't also get uh, included into your Python library. All right, now that we have some documentation uh, uh, working for us on our pages, let's go ahead and upload this to GitHub and um, so that it's live now for everyone to be able to see. So we can just do a git add all update documentation. And we can do a git push. So we go on over to our library. Um, some other uh, things that I'll mention real fast is that um, other things that MBDEF gives you is that you can toggle the uh, nav bar and also it has a link to the repo and stuff that people can click. So if we go ahead over to our settings, scroll down to our URL, go ahead and open this. We'll see that we now have it live uh, for everyone to be able to view, uh, not just locally how we had it here. And it has all of our content, including the um, tutorials and stuff like that. So, um, all right, so that's going to do it for this video. Um, the next part is going to be all about testing with MV Dev. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. If you have any questions, comments, uh, concerns, suggestions, recommendations, or whatever, uh, leave them down in the comment section below. Um, and uh, also subscribe if you want more content like this.